Hi, Mickey. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks, Melita. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm really excited to learn more about how you became a conscious parenting coach, because that sounds really amazing. I know I'm, I'm not sure I'm very conscious as a parent at all. <laughs> Um, and where and and see if you've got any tips for us working mums on how we can keep everything in balance as well. But before we move into that, could you just tell us a little bit about your background? How did you start your your coaching business? Sure. Yes. Um, so I came into parent coaching um, a little bit by mistake, I guess. I had a career for fourteen years in the corporate world. Um, was fairly successful and and fairly driven, and then um, ended up as as most a lot of women do with two toddlers, and found myself balancing full time work and having raising young children. And at that time, um, I really struggled with the with the transition to motherhood. I really struggled with um, dealing effectively with my children. I heard my mother's voice coming out of my mouth and I was, you know, shocked <laughs> and all these things that, you know, I was becoming this mother that I didn't want to be effectively. And, um, and I guess I went and sought training for myself as a parent to say, you know what, I know that there's another way to parent my children and this cannot be the only way, the way that's coming out of me naturally is, is not right or is not the way that I want to parent my children. Um, so I took my first parenting course, I think when my eldest daughter was three. Um, and it, from the first day, it changed my life, um, literally changed my family life um, for the better. It taught me ways to communicate to, to her that would help her um, get on side and cooperate with me. It, um, helped me figure out what kind of parent I wanted to be rather than coming to this whole role as, as we often do by, by mistake almost. We just enter it and think we, we should naturally know how to parent. Um, so fast forward that, I left my corporate career and followed my husband out to Switzerland um, for his business and ended up being a full-time mother and um, so really had to put a lot of these skills to the test of what I learned and, and refine them. And, um, and I saw so many parents around me really struggling with the same things that I had struggled with. And so I knew that I could help them. And I retrained as a parent coach um, and then started my business about five or six years ago, training parents. Uh, not just in sort of hard parenting skills like, you know, ways to communicate with your children, but also looking at um, really becoming conscious about this is, this is the, the, these are the values that I want to impart to my children. Um, this is how I want to behave. This is the kind of person and role model that I want to be for my children. Um, and I just think too often we, we just fumble through life and we're so busy and we're juggling children and juggling work that we don't even think about like, am I, am I doing what I want to do? Am I behaving the way I want to behave? Yeah, I love that. And thinking about it, that's where I encourage all my clients to start with their business is understanding, well, what do you want from your business? What's meaningful for you? What's meaningful for your clients? What kind of results do you want to get for them? And aligning those two things. And that, but it sounds like what you're saying as a parent, if once we, we understand how, what we want for our family, how we want to parent, what's important to us and what future we want for our kids, then we can be much more focused in the way we parent. And does that help then with the mum guilt? Because I know lots of people have this mum guilt. And that was one thing that I, happened to me early on as a parent. I realized that I, I can no longer help everybody which I was always like I was helping out so and so and doing this for someone else and that was and I was like I can't do that so I prioritized my kids and decided I can't feel guilty about giving my kids the best start in life and and that helped me step over that guilt eventually it took a bit of time um, but it sounds like taking that step back back to decide well this is how this is the kind of parent I want to be this is the kind of future I want to create and the values I want to instill in my kids 
that that filter would help you stop comparing so much and or worrying that oh so and so is doing things this way maybe I should be doing the same I think that's always a big problem I see for for lots of mums do you think that's a fair um, assessment definitely definitely and I think um, it's not only I, th I think when people first answer the question what do I want for my kids or what do I want my family to look like we all sort of come up with very similar things. Like, I want my children to be happy. I want them to be successful. I want them to reach their full potential. Um, and then really what I work with parents is to go at a level deeper than that. Um, and to really question, you know, what do you mean when you say you want your child to be happy? What do you mean when you say you want them to be successful? What does that look like um, for you? What does that, what are you asking of them or what are your expectations of them? And I think it's the same, you know, for ourselves, for sure, when we think about being a mother, is what are the expectations that I'm placing on myself? And therefore, you know, how does that transpire in my daily life and provoke the, the mom guilt that we all feel? Um, or, or how can I learn to change my expectations of myself so that I don't feel that, that this, this excessive guilt um, unnecessarily? Yeah. I remember when I took the decision not to go back to work and I had the most amazing boss I was really good at it. I loved my team I loved my work I loved my boss uh, I loved everything about what I used to do but I loved my daughter more <laughs> so it, it kind of made the decision not to go back to full-time employment and start my own um, business so I could work part-time was was the right decision but he left me with, with words that I've I've shared with so many other mums out there because it was just such a powerful idea for me was that he said you know I want you to know that in taking time out of the corporate environment to build your own business and be the mom you want to be that's going to be the most important leadership lesson you'll ever have so don't ever feel you've taken a step back but you've just learned and grown in different areas and that's always going to make you a better leader and I love that concept but being a good leader you the first step in being in, in doing that is to, to narrow down your values, to know what your values are and, and to stay um, in an alignment with those all of the time. And knowing that makes decisions easier and again, eliminates this, this guilt factor as well because we can't be everything to everybody and do everything. But as mums, I think we often forget that and we, we just feel that we should sacrifice ourselves completely and do everything perfectly. Um, but of course that's, that's not the case at all. And I remember, actually, I think I put a blog post out about it recently and a few people are like, gosh, how do you do everything? And it's like, I don't, <laughs> there's a lot I don't do. And I have a cleaner and my husband helps with the laundry, you know, and we do it at the weekend together. It's not something that, you know, my business time is my business time. Um, but is there any tips you can share with people on how to create those kind of boundaries? Um, yeah, I think the first thing is, uh, uh, so, so much value in what you've just said there. Um, I think the first thing is to really prioritize. So when we are working and we have our own business and, you know, and we're juggling the whole motherhood thing as well, you really need to prioritize and get really straight on what is important to me. And it may be, you know, many women, when their children are young, prioritize their children first or more than their business. And that's fine. There's no, you know, um, value judgment in that. You have to make your own decisions. And as you said, not compare yourself to other people. Um, or that if you prioritize your business over your family and you find another way to juggle your family, that's okay too, right? Like you just have to figure out what is most important to you. What is, um, you know, what is going to help you thrive as a mother and as a person um, so that you can um, also be there for your family. Yeah. Um, so, and I would also say that, uh, you know, once you have prioritized, then you can look at, okay, what time do I have? So, you know, if your children are young, perhaps you have a little bit less time because you're more hands-on as a parent. Um, if they're older, you, you know, you start, your time starts to free up a little bit more. And when you look at the time that you have, then you can start to chunk out, like, this is time that I'm going to be completely focused on my business. 
and these are times when my kids are around and I have to be completely focused on them. And then you're going to have other times where it's, you need to be a little bit more fluid, but when you can carve out some chunks of time where you're one or the other, then you um, give yourself the space to let go of that guilt. Um, so then you can say, okay, right now is my work time totally focused on that. My kids are taken care of. I've got childcare or some other things sorted. Um, and then when I'm with them, I'm hundred percent all in with them and I'm not, you know, checking my phone and trying to answer emails at the same time so that you don't have that guilt of I'm neglecting one over the other. Yeah. And I found having that focus really helps me. I mean, it's, it's often we do our best work under a dead, the pressure of a deadline. Yeah. And it's like if school lunchtime is that deadline, <laughs> it's the same thing. Um, and yeah, it really helps me to focus. And those weeks where I've had a bit more time to work on my business, I haven't been any more productive. So I think working, well, for me, my experience anyway, working part-time around my family, I feel that I achieve almost as much as if I was able to work full-time anyway. So personally, I found having those boundaries and then it, it kind of pushes me and, and I gave myself permission a long time ago to, to ask for help. Because, you know, like, this is my priority. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. But all of this isn't my priority, but it still needs to get done. So I need, I need to ask for help with that. Um, and, and I love that when you very first started, and that was the first step in your journey, was the case that you recognized that you weren't being the parent you wanted to be. So you asked for help. And that help then was so transformational that you've been able to then pass that on and bring that transformation to other parents as well. But I think as, as another area that we forget. In fact, I've got a whole book on my bookshelf behind me somewhere that says it's called Women Don't Ask. <laughs> we have this thing where we feel we have to do everything and be brilliant at everything. Is there any tips you can give women on how they can make their own life a little bit easier? Um, Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Like we really do. I, I think it could be culturally dependent as well, but we really do as a whole struggle to, to ask for help. Um, and, and again, I think it goes to um, prior prioritizing. So sometimes we don't know, we think, like you said, we think we have to do it all. We have to do that, keep the house clean and feed the children nutritious meals and, you know, and do our work at the same time. Um, and really setting aside some time to go, you know, what is really important to me? And if you have a partner to discuss with them sort of, okay, these are the things that are sort of lower down on my priority list. How can you help? Um, or engaging your children. So, so many parents, I think these days feel so reluctant to ask their children for help. Like, especially mothers, we think, okay, if we are not working full time, that we have to do it all. But actually, your children want to and need to help you around the house. So even from, I would say, from age two onwards, you need to be engaging your children in activities around the house, helping out uh, with household, household duties um, as much as possible. And even if they are older and completely overscheduled for whatever reason, um, they've got loads of activities and lots of homework, they can still help out around the house so that you're not having to do it all. Um, and I don't think that's something that we should feel guilty about because you're teaching your children a lesson and actually they feel um, not only capable, but valued when they help out around the house. Yeah, exactly. And it teaches them to, to really think for themselves, to take and become a little bit more independent and feel part of the family. And I guess if you're doing everything and then the kids are just lounging around the whole time or doing their own thing, that's, that's not, that's not what I believe a family is, was all about either. Yeah. And then you become resentful to your children or you feel like they're, you know, then you start to see their entitled, you know, some entitlement mentality, or, you know, we think of our children as ungrateful and then that starts a whole nother cycle of things. Yeah. Um, so I think really setting up, you know, setting yourself up and seeing, how, how can I get help here? So if your children are young, can you get some childcare? Um, or can you, you know, if you feel that um, keeping the house tidy is, is, you know, 
taking up too much of your time, then can you get a cleaner, you know, just, or babysit swap with friends sometimes. So if you can't afford it, then, you know, childcare swap with a friend. Um, look for solutions where you can get help um, in things that you really don't need to do yourself. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I remember my midwife very early on when my, my eldest was young, she, she said, you know, before you do anything for your child, you want to ask yourself, do I want to be doing this for the next 18 years? And so and I was like, oh, that's a great question. So, so if you don't want to be tidying up that Lego for the next 18 years, tell her right now she has to start doing it. It's like, but she can't even crawl yet. <laughs> you know? But it's, I, I thought that was just such a great lesson. And, and you can apply it to anything in life. You know, is this how I want to be doing things always? Or can I set a better precedent, a better system in right now? And what I found in asking for help very often is that people love to help. You know, was when I used to have meetings um, that were outside my child's crash hours, I'd ask uh, a friend or there was a retired midwife actually that lived in the apartment behind me. Um, and she was, she was British, but we live in a French speaking area. So she loved the chance to speak French, uh, English. Um, and so I'd ask them, would you mind taking my child for a couple of hours while I go for this meeting? And they were like, oh, we would love to. And they really loved that experience. And um, so, so yeah, and asking for help also very often you're doing people a favor because it makes them feel good to help you too. So it's, um, it's really something that since I've learned to ask, I do more and more and more all the time. Um, yeah. but taking advantage, of course, that's something else. But Yeah, no, for sure. And it, you know, it doesn't make you, um, like everyone has their own way of doing things, you know, and I think you mentioned not comparing earlier. And I think that's so important for mothers, especially is to, you know, you are totally on your own journey, whether it's in work or, or your family life, and you've got to find your own way. Um, so just because some other mother can seem to do it all, you know, <laughs> doesn't mean that you have to, you have to do that. Um, so, yeah. And very often they're not doing it all. They're just doing the bits that that you don't do perhaps, but you're not seeing all the bits that you do that they're not doing is always um, that, that compromise because we are only human. We all have the same hours in the day. There's no kind of magic source. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I think there's also, you know, um, like I think a lot of mothers struggle when their children are little to balance work. Um, so there's something about, you know, not only getting them to help out, but, um, helping them to play independently or be independent um, without you so that you can create a little bit more time in your day. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, about creating boundaries with them to say, hey, you know what, I've got these other priorities as well as you. Um, so for right now, you need to go and play independently and you can set them up and do lots of other things to help them. Um, but that can also create some more time for you to, to be focused on your work. Yeah, and I often had a conversation with my kids as well to say, well, this is what I'm doing. This is why it's important to me. And this is what I need from you. But then afterwards, what should we do with that time together? So that they they could see, okay, well, I'm going to do something for mommy and mommy's going to do something for me. And that we, we're a bit of a team. And I involved them in my work as much as possible. And <laughs> now they're a little bit older. So in the old days, they used to help me. Well, I had a a uh, wellness product business for a while and they would help me stick the labels on or or they would hold the packets while I was putting bows on Christmas gifts and things like that so they would do little things but I was also had my um, self-development CDs that I didn't have time to sit and read a book so I'd listen to them in the car because we were always driving from one play group to another or something so they just took on all of this amazing uh, entrepreneurial thinking from a really early age which was great and when I had a challenge in my business, I would ask them, I was like, well, this is the situation right now. And some of the, the, the suggestions they came up with were completely crazy, but I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's interesting. And um, but some of them were really good. Um, and it, they felt really part of my business mm -hmm. because I involved them where I could, but then it means that when I need to do something on my own, that's important. They really respect that as well, because it's that they feel like it's their business too. Um, mm -hmm. So like when I was doing the, my videos in the early days, and if you look on Google, you'll see this, this, pit, this video of my daughter who decided she was going to help me. And she was just pre pressing the stop and start button, which is great because then I didn't have to edit it with my lean in bit, <laughs> at the end, you know, um, 
but then she's like, I want to come on, 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 on the front of the camera. So she put some lipstick on herself all over her face. And then she sat there and then she just like couldn't contain herself, shouted it out really, really loud and just didn't stop giggling at all. And it's really infectious. It's only like 30 seconds long. But if you want, if you want to smile, go and watch that video. It's hilarious. Um, but, you know, it really helped her to feel part of it. And now she understands what I'm trying to achieve and how it works. Then she's kind of gives me that space now when I'm doing the podcasts and videos and things too. But um, yeah, it's, it's been really interesting. And now they're a bit older, like my eldest, she's starting to help me with some graphics as well. So she's learning how to use Canva and how to do graphics. And I'm teaching her a little bit about and the balance and you know all these little things and she feels so proud that she's actually done something to contribute which is quite nice so I think the tasks is not just in the home but it can be in your business too definitely and I don't know if you remember being a child but I mean our children love like playing office and you know helping out so if they feel like they're actually contributing to a real office or a real business you know that's like icing on the cake for them yeah um yeah and um, I think the thing you you mentioned is also uh, speaking to connection with our child. Like, so taking time to reconnect is really important. So when we have had that time away from them, um, whether it's your child coming home from school at the end of the day, or you've just you know popped them in front of the TV to have a meeting, um, and you're you know you're coming back to them, I think taking just even you know thirty seconds to reconnect with them, whether that's physically or emotionally. Um, is really important to say, hey, I'm back, you know, thanks for giving me that space and time. Um, and now let's, let's do something fun together. Yeah, I think I read, I don't know if it's true, you can tell me, but um, I read a long time ago when the kids were little, that kids need to be, you need to touch them on the shoulder or, you know, have some kind of contact with them at least seven times a day. So that's always been my standard. Like, have I like touched them, hugged them, spoken directly to them, but at least seven times in the day and it doesn't have to be a long thing but then that's the the uh, how, however much they need to feel to, to remain connected to you is, is that something is that true <laughs> yeah yeah um I, I i normally teach eight times a day but yeah okay. i need to up my yeah. game <laughs> yeah but it's really hard especially you know when your child's a baby or a toddler we're very very physical with them but as they grow older it, it very quickly declines um, depending on the nature of your child and some children may be uncomfortable with that but yeah I mean even reconnecting with them you know um, giving them eye contact and and uh, dedicated attention is really hard for us to do that eight times a day you know that's a lot when you start to count it up and tally it throughout the day we think oh do I really do that um, especially yeah as your kids get older yeah I like to have like small standards in my business like did I do these are the things that I absolutely have to do each day and then you know as long as I get that ticked off then I'm doing good um, but that, that's always been one of my kind of little things and as, as a parent I've done <laughs> yeah you've already shared so many amazing tips on the podcast is there any final bits of advice you'd like to give to the women out there who are building a business and bal balancing that with um, being a parent is there any other things you would like them to to know or tips you'd like to leave them with um, I think the main thing for me um, is is to keep it simple um, simplify as much as possible I know that my in my own business journey I overcomplicated things um, and when you boil it down to as you said like what absolutely has to be done and if you're doing those things it's enough and it's okay um, I think that that's really important and that can go for motherhood as well as as your work life um, in both areas just keeping things as simple as possible not overcomplicating your life and um, and not being afraid to dream big, you know, whether that's for your family or for yourself. Uh, I think too often we hold ourselves back and we go, oh, that's not realistic. It's not realistic for me to, you know, be a great mother and have this business um, succeed or, and, and yeah, and we, and so we hold ourselves back, but I think we, we can do it. It is possible. We just keep things simple. Don't compare yourself. Don't judge yourself too much. Um, take it a step at a time. I love that. Have the courage to dream big. And if you listen to this podcast and other 
stories and read, read biology, biology, <laughs> biographies um, of, of other women, especially, it's incredible to see what's possible. And once you start to, to build out that, that sphere of what, what you believe could be possible, um, then it, it starts to get really exciting. Yeah. When definitely. you start to actually achieve some of these things, like, oh, I've just made the first step in making this whole thing happen. It's, it's really exciting and motivating. And that's when everything starts to take off. So I love that you, you ended on that. Thank you so much, Mickey. So I'm going to put all your contact details and links and everything below, but for anyone who's um, listening to this while changing nappies, <laughs> how, can, how can they find you? Um, yeah, I have a website. It's uh, www.myparenttoolkit.com. And if people go there, um, there's a freebie on there they can download. It's 10 things that your daughter wants you to know. Um, I help all parents, but I tend to specifically help um, mothers of girls because I find that they uh, struggle a lot um, and, and do, yeah, can do with a lot of help. So, yeah, I love that. And I'm always, it used to really annoy me, but what, I have two girls and, and everyone's like, oh, it's easier for you because you've got girls. I was like, you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that you've, um, you shared that and there's, I'm going to have to download that. I'm really intrigued now. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time, Mickey. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.